CUDA introduces the concept of a partitioned memory space to expose to the programmer the different levels of parallelism and performance that the GPU offers. This lecture is about this memory model, which is one of the major differences between a CUDA program and a normal C program, at least from a programmer's perspective. Now the goal of all of these short lectures so far has been to introduce the CUDA programming model from a very high level and not really focus on very much syntax or actually how to use any of these high level concepts since any real programming can only be learned through actually writing code. But in this lecture we're going to take an even higher level view and try not to view more than maybe one or two slides of code since this abstract notion of the memory model is such a fundamental concept to CUDA. So far, we've already discussed the first fundamental concept of the CUDA programming model, which is the thread hierarchy. The second fundamental concept of CUDA is its memory model that has a direct one-to-one -one correspondence with this thread hierarchy. Just like there are three levels in the thread hierarchy, there are also three levels to this main memory model. At the lowest level, we have a memory space termed local memory which corresponds to individual threads. Each thread has its own private local memory that cannot be accessed by any other thread. When a thread has completed its execution, any local memory related to that thread is automatically destroyed. Threads also have private registers that have the same scope and lifetime as local memory, but have drastically different performance characteristics, which we'll discuss soon. In the next level up the hierarchy, we have shared memory, which corresponds to blocks in the thread hierarchy. Each block has its own region of shared memory that is visible and accessible to all the threads within that block. When a block has completed its execution, the contents of its shared memory are automatically destroyed. Now at the highest level of the hierarchy, we have global memory, which corresponds to all of the grids in the entire program. The contents of global memory are visible to every thread in the entire program. The lifetime of data stored in global memory lasts the duration of the entire program or can be manually destroyed using the CUDA free function in the host code. Let's take a look at how the memory is physically laid out on the device. As discussed in the first lecture, we have the host on the left which is composed of the CPU and the computer's RAM. And on the right, we have the device, which is composed of the GPU and its corresponding DRAM. The device's DRAM is where the global and local memory spaces are physically located. One thing that's very important to note here is that the name local is not referring to its physical location. The term local refers to the scope and lifetime of this memory space. As discussed previously, each one of the green squares in the lower image on the GPU represents a physical CUDA core. These CUDA cores are grouped together into what are called streaming multiprocessors, or SMs for short. The SMs are represented in the bottom image as the yellow rectangles grouped together as sets of CUDA cores. Understanding how blocks are mapped onto SMs is fundamental during the design of kernels to gain optimal computational performance from the GPU. So we'll discuss SMs in more detail in a following lecture. Shared memory and registers are termed on-chip device memory, since they are physically located on the GPU's streaming multiprocessors. The global and local memory regions are termed off-chip device memory, since it's not physically located on the GPU itself. 
Taking a closer look at the physical layout of an NVIDIA GPU might help to clarify why the DRAM is termed off-chip memory. The circuit in this image is a GeForce Titan with the protective cover and heatsink taken off. The chip in the center is the actual GPU. The region surrounded by the blue lines is where the device's DRAM is physically located. As we'll see in a future lecture, we usually want to move frequently accessed data to the fastest memory available to us. This slide illustrates the relative speeds of the different memory spaces. We will crudely refer to the memory speed in this discussion as the combination of the approximate bandwidth and latency of each memory space. The different memory regions are designed to be used for different purposes, but because of their physical design, each memory space has drastically different memory bandwidths and latencies. Global memory is the region that we are most familiar with so far. Anytime we allocate memory on the device by using CUDA malloc, this is the region where that allocation takes place. Since global memory is stored in off-chip DRAM, it exhibits very slow memory characteristics relative to the other memory spaces. The use of global memory can't be avoided since we must transfer data between the host and device using this memory space. However, the goal is to minimize the global memory traffic since it is so slow. The upside to global memory is that it's very large. Comparable to a computer's RAM, which is usually about 8 or 16 gigabytes, the Titan and Tesla K40 both have 6 gigabytes of global DRAM. Now as we've discussed already, each thread has its own private local memory and registers that cannot be accessed by any other thread. Any variable that is declared inside of a kernel is stored in a register. If the size of the contents stored in this variable become too large to fit into the register space, then the contents will spill over into the local memory. Register spilling into local memory is very undesirable because although registers are the fastest form of memory in CUDA, local memory is one of the slowest regions. So the goal is simply to attempt to not place more information in local variables than can be stored in the register space. The register space is a scarce hardware resource and we'll discuss how to better utilize it when we look at the GPU architecture closer in a future lecture. Now shared memory is an extremely special memory space and its use is critical in the goal of computational performance and correctness. Shared memory is special for two primary reasons. The first reason is that it's extremely fast since it's implemented on chip. The second reason shared memory is special is because it allows for threads within a block to talk to each other. In a sense, shared memory can sort of be thought of as user-defined L1 cache. And as we'll see in a future lecture, shared memory and L1 cache actually have an intimate relationship. Now, as promised, there's only going to be one slide in this entire lecture that covers any code whatsoever. And it's this slide here. And it's very little code, actually. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how we do declare a variable in shared memory. So to create a shared variable, you simply annotate the variable declaration with the keyword shared. And this is done 
inside the kernel's body. Note the double underscores before and after the keyword shared. This is similar to whenever we use the keyword global. Now as we know, this kernel will very likely be executed by thousands or even millions of threads. So the first thread that performs the actions described in the body of this kernel will see the shared keyword preceding the variable's declaration and this will alert the compiler to store this variable in shared memory. All subsequent threads that execute this kernel will simply overlook the line of code that declares the shared variable. In this very simple example, a pointer to the array named in, which happens to be stored in global memory, is passed into the kernel as an argument. In each thread that executes this kernel, a single element of the global device variable in is copied into a corresponding element of the array whose contents are stored in shared memory. Now there's one more portion of the memory model that we need to discuss that doesn't really have a corresponding level of thread hierarchy and it's called the constant memory space. The idea of constant memory is that since the GPUs don't have a very big cache, as we'll see in a future lecture, we can implement a very simple kind of cache using constant memory. Constant memory is very large since it's actually located in the device's DRAM. All threads have access to it, but it is read-only memory. We want to use this memory space for data that is accessed frequently, but does not change its contents throughout a kernel's execution. Although constant memory is implemented in hardware in off-chip DRAM, its contents are actually aggressively cached into on-chip memory. Therefore, using constant memory can substantially reduce global memory traffic throughout a kernel's execution. To summarize this lecture, let's take a real quick look at how all of these memory spaces appear to the programmer. At the lowest level, we have registers and local memory. Any normal variable that's declared inside of a kernel is stored in a register if the contents are too large to fit inside the register files that are allocated to that thread, then the contents will spill over into local memory, which is undesirable as we discussed because local memory is located in off-chip DRAM. And then we have the extremely special memory space, shared memory. And as we discussed, shared memory is very special for two reasons. The first is that it's extremely fast because it's physically located in on-chip DRAM. The second reason shared memory is so special is because it allows threads with any block to communicate with each other. Then we have the special memory space called constant. In this constant memory space, we want to store any variables that have contents that do not change throughout the kernel's execution. Although constant memory is physically located in off-chip DRAM, its contents are aggressively cached into on-chip memory, therefore reducing global memory traffic. And then finally, we have the familiar global memory space, which we've been using all along whenever we copy data back and forth from the host to the device. 
and that summarizes all of the basic memory spaces of the CUDA memory model.